plant-based meats burst onto the scene in the late 2000s, making waves in the food industry with record revenues, impressive IPOs, celebrity endorsements, and a new food technology that promised to revolutionize the way we eat meat forever. But something went wrong and plant-based meat alternatives are now on a fast downward decline with almost no hope of recovery. How did one of the most impressive food innovations of the 21st century end up being such a disaster? Plant-based meats have come a long way since its origins in 1981. This is when Oregon restaurateur Paul Wenner famously shaped leftover vegetables and rice pilaf into patties and sold them as garden burgers. Today we have everything from 3D printed meat to carefully crafted plant-based meat alternatives designed to taste, smell, and look just like real meat. Plant-based meats were supposed to revolutionize the way we eat and make vegan lifestyles much more appealing to the masses, but now it just seems like it has achieved the exact opposite effect. Customers are skeptical of the supposed health and environmental benefits of plant-based meat and find it to be more unappealing than the real thing. This is becoming more true as people are learning that the label plant-based does not mean it's healthy and something that looks like meat with the label rich in protein does not tell us the full story. What is usually being offered is protein. We like to talk about protein. We'd like to talk about the protein transition and how animal protein is supposed to be bad and plant protein is to be, supposed to be superior but that is extremely reductionist. A piece of meat or a piece of cheese or an egg is about much more than just protein. It contains a whole spectrum of vitamins and minerals, but also a lot of bioactive compounds that you will not find in imitation products. When you look at Impossible Burger and companies like that, they use a lot of uh, novel proteins. In other words, things in their meat that we really can't even fully understand. Alternative meats are highly synthetic processed foods full of unpronounceable fillers, stabilizers, preservatives, and colorings. But more than this, they fall into the category of UPFs, which is just another way of saying ultra-processed foods. This was first identified by Brazilian academics as part of the NOVA classification. UPFs are now widely accepted by food experts to be unhealthy and probably addictive. These types of synthetic processed foods are blamed for the increasing rates of obesity and poor health worldwide. Nova defines ultra-processed foods as products that generally come in a packet and include ingredients and processes you wouldn't use at home. According to Nova, ultra-processed foods are full of flavors, colors, sweeteners, emulsifiers, and other additives used to imitate sensorial qualities of unprocessed or minimally processed foods and their culinary preparations, or to disguise undesirable qualities of the final product. In other words, products that are manipulated to fool us to make ingredients seem more appetizing or longer lasting or somehow better than they actually are. Ultra processed foods don't just trick our palates, they confuse our bodies too. They trigger hormones that encourage us to overeat. And said, oh man, what are you eating? You know, like you got all this yeasty, you know, like, like, uh, they, you know, and I was like, They're experts. I'm like, I'm like, I, I, I told them I'm, I'm vegan. And they were like, oh, well, that's the problem is that like you're eating this highly processed soy and wheat that your mm -hmm. body does not recognize as food and clearly your body's struggling to break it down it's an absurd substance posing as food well those impossible burgers we we showed a study the other day that was showing that it's toxic for rats yeah they, they fed rats the impossible burger and the rats are getting sick aside from this there is also some evidence that the body has problems processing and digesting some of the ingredients commonly found in this food category but the overall trend in food is a move towards natural whole foods people are moving away from preservatives and things that have been synthetically engineered consumer trust has also been affected by the countless lawsuits against the most popular plant-based meat manufacturers. For instance, a landmark lawsuit against Impossible Foods initiated by the CFS Center for Food Safety. 
This is after the CFS expressed safety concerns regarding the use of a genetically engineered substance called heme. Heme is a bioengineered protein additive that has a meat-like taste and color and is what they use to make their burgers. However, it does not meet what the FDA generally recognizes as safe because it's not a food or even a food ingredient. The Center for Food Safety, who filed this lawsuit, do not believe heme meets the right safety standards for human consumption, despite being approved by the FDA. Unlike animal meat that has been relatively safely consumed throughout human history, meat substitutes are a completely new concept, so any negative publicity that come from lawsuits hit the industry harder are much more damaging, cause much more skepticism, and immediately impact sales. But the problems don't end here because the business models of these companies don't seem to stack up either. Let's take a look at a company like Beyond Meat. On the day of its IPO, it cost around $25 per share. And the company was valued at $3.8 billion. And at that time, it was the best performing public offering by a major US company in almost two decades. At one point, Beyond shares were more than 600% higher than its initial IPO. But today, you can pick up a share of Beyond Meat for as little as $8. As the market leader in most recognizable brand in the alternative meat industry, the downfall of Beyond Meat shows the problems that the industry has had. The first problem that Beyond Meat has is that it is as expensive, if not more, than regular meat. In the current cost of living crises, many people are looking for places to cut their spending, especially on non-essentials like alternative meat. And there are many instances where Beyond or Impossible Burgers are up to a third, sometimes double the price of their natural alternatives. And then it turns out that almost all the major companies in the meat substitute industry are run very poorly from an operations perspective. For instance, Beyond Meat had a radical push for growth, which paid off after its initial public offering, but this was all funded by high amounts of debt, which the company reported to be around $1.1 billion. This overinvestment in the business didn't pay off because sales immediately started to fall and in fact have never recovered. And it seems unlikely that Beyond will ever recover because they struggle to scale their products into reliable and consistent manufacturing processes. Ethan Brown and other executives would show products that had been made by hand in small quantities to customers, restaurants, and retailers and generate a lot of excitement about the new innovations. Based on these prototypes, the commercialization team would receive the new innovations, but actually struggle to scale up those products. According to the Wall Street Journal, Beyond struggled with manufacturing for new products like chicken tenders and jerky. Former and current employees also said the rush to market led to a lot of waste. Equipment was purchased that wasn't needed and packaging for new products would be printed before nutritional facts were confirmed and had to be discarded. The push to get more products in grocery stores created a lot of production and manufacturing costs. The company also said their jerky product made in partnership with PepsiCo had a complex and high cost manufacturing process. And this reduced the company's gross profit by nearly $6 million. Some people at the company said these problems were caused by Brown's leadership. Many employees said he struggled to manage Beyond's growth, particularly with planning, prioritizing, and sticking to the company's core objectives, leading to confusion and frustration among employees. The company had started to recover slightly after the worldwide shutdown in 2020. But when grocery sales eventually fell, so did its stock price. The fact that sales were down and continue to fall at grocery stores is a significant problem for the business because this is a substantial proportion of the company's source of revenue. Now Beyond is left losing more and more money each quarter, amassing debt because of its high manufacturing costs and experiencing a run of bad luck. That just means more negative publicity. There are also serious questions to answer for another key selling point the environment. Plant-based meats were once sold as being environmentally friendly, but this is not true. Let's take a look at something like soybeans. They are packed full of vitamins and minerals, so have become the foundation of many plant-based and vegan foods. 
However, their cultivation requires a lot of space, and this often leads to deforestation, particularly in regions like the Amazon. As demand increases, more forests are cleared to make room for soybean crops, which disrupt local habitats. Also, soybean cultivation encroaches on areas where animals typically graze, thereby displacing these animals and disrupting local ecosystems. Other popular nutrient-rich plant-based ingredients like quinoa and pea protein also require intensive farming practices. These products are now so popular that farmers are trying to grow it constantly without giving the soil enough time to rest. This has led to a lot of soil losing its natural fertility. Aside from depleting soil of its core nutrients, the large-scale intensive farming of these crops dramatically increases the use of things like water and chemical fertilizers, which contribute to water pollution and soil degradation. Also, plant-based doesn't mean an end to all animal deaths. In fact, there is some evidence to suggest that more animals can be harmed as a result of the harvesting process required to produce popular plant-based ingredients. Up to 7.3 billion animals killed every year from plant agriculture. If you count birds killed by pesticides, fish deaths from fertilizer runoff, plus reptiles and amphibians poisonings from eating toxic insects from the pesticides. What's the number? 7.3 billion animals killed so, every year through in plant terms agriculture. of life. There's far more life taken by plant agriculture than there is life taken by animal agriculture, even factory farming. Oh yeah, we're not killing 7.3 billion cows. But wait, doesn't eating meat cause cancer, heart disease? For years, we were told that meat is linked to many serious diseases. And so there were probably many people who bought into plant-based meats, believing that it was the healthier option. However, the health risks linked to meat were attention-grabbing headlines that didn't tell the whole story. The problem with most of the studies these headlines are based on is that correlation does not always mean causation. For instance, the people in the study who reversed heart disease with a plant-based diet also cut out sugar from their diet, exercised, meditated, and focused on well-being overall. There's also a very convincing argument that the reason a lot of studies show red meat causes heart disease is because those who smoke and drink are more likely to eat red meat, while people who are vegans or follow a plant-based diet are more likely to be concerned with their health and therefore more likely to engage with many other healthy habits and activities. There was an an article criticizing fake meat by this woman Dana Pearls, who's this you know part of an environmental organization called Friends of the Earth, and she says, "quote Instead of investing in risky new food technologies that are potential problems masquerading as solutions, shouldn't we be investing in proven beneficial regenerative agriculture and transparent organic food that consumers are actually demanding?" We tend to view innovation as something that's just benefits on top of benefits on top of benefits. The innovation has to clearly be better than the current way of doing things, or at the very least, show the promise of being better at some point in the future. But sadly, this is not the case when it comes to plant-based meat. Numerous lawsuits, safety issues, difficult and expensive to scale products, bad publicity, and customer preferences for natural whole foods are just some reasons why processed meat alternatives may never become popular again. The perception of plant-based meats are at an all-time low, and this perception is unlikely to improve unless they can create a truly healthy, unprocessed product. In the meantime, the industry continues to suffer reputational damage while it struggles to reconvince customers that plant-based meat is a better alternative to real meat.